Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with the Doodle Bastard. And it's been quite a while since I've worked on this thing. In fact, it's, it's been about a year. I've fiddled with it a little bit in between, but nothing that was video worthy. Uh, where I left off at is I got some new pilot jets because it turned out the thing wasn't idling right due to a fuel mixture problem. There was at least one person that recommended that. So I investigated. And it uh, turns out these uh, PZ30 carburetors are jetted inadequately for a 200cc engine. So I got a jet assortment kit, and um, this was nice, because usually these suckers are like, you know, between 5 and $10 each. And I ended up getting, uh, I think this is a 10-pack uh, from Amazon for 11 bucks. And these are for a PZ30 carburetor, also working the PZ27, but I mean, you know, for, for the $10.99 that these things cost me, that was, yeah, that was a good thing. I didn't know what I was going to need. Some people recommended, you know, use a 40. That's what comes in most production bikes that run a PZ30 carburetor and 200cc engine. So we're going to try with that first. A few of the other things we need to do today is we need to, of course, put that carburetor back together. We also need to seal up the gas tank. I've got some sealer for that too, so that way we can properly use this gas tank. And the last thing, I need to investigate why the uh, battery isn't charging properly. And that wasn't the reason why. Uh, why it isn't charging properly while on the battery tender. Right now I got a red flashing light, which uh, tells me that it's not connected. That's the same thing it does when it's disconnected. I don't know what's going on, but when I pulled it off, it's flashing a light just the same. So we're gonna have to dig into this thing for sure. And uh, well, we got, we got some tasks. We'll get this thing set up, we'll get that tank sealed up, and then uh, from here out, uh, we'll probably call it a day. Anyways, licky likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. Thanks for watching. All right, welcome back. We've got our jets here. Let's bust these open. Oh, I thought it was just a, a tear open. I guess it's not. Wish it had a Ziploc on it, but it also does not. I've got a uh, very interesting place where I keep all of my jets. I dropped them down into a little prescription bottle. And these are pretty much jets to just about everything that I've ever owned that runs carbureted. There's Volkswagen jets in here. There's Pook Moped. There's Kawasaki jets. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. All right, now what we're looking for out of here is going to be a 40. And I don't know if uh, I'm going to be able to read these. Actually, yeah, I read them quite well. That's a 35. Anyway, I'm going to be here all day showing these to you. 38, 40. That's the one we're looking for. All right, put all the rest of these down in the cup. We're going to put this right down into this carburetor. Well, first off, let me look through it, make sure it's clean. <laughs> yeah, I don't see any dirt or scoongeal in there there we go and it just threads right in and of course I don't happen to have my flathead handy for some reason I thought it was uh, a wrench on it's been a while since I've touched this stuff that's for sure let's grab a screwdriver all right typically I would do this kind of work over a bench in case I would drop one of these little pieces but if I screw up today you're gonna get to watch the duck man screw up and you're gonna laugh at me and it's gonna be a fun video <laughs> Got to put the bowl back onto the carburetor. All this stuff is uh, brand new, by the way. Well, nearly brand new. This was, of course, run a couple of times last year, but everything is still spotlessly clean because it's not particularly used for a long time. This is a weird screwdriver. As it starts to snug up, it cams right out. It's the right size for this, though. I don't like the way the tip on that is cut, though. Eh, let me get a different screwdriver. Okay, here we go. That's much better. Okay. We now have a once again reassembled carburetor. And as I was told, that 40 pilot jet should be enough to make it idle correctly. The uh, idle screw that's on here was also told that if it has to take more than two turns outwards, and I was a lot of turns outwards before. In fact, I had it turned out so many turns that it would just uh, fall out. But if it's anything more than two whole turns, that the pilot jet needs to be bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it to about one and a half turns right there. And we'll play with it, of course, once we um, get it on the bike and get it running again. 
Okay, I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and put it on the bike. All right, put our float back, not float, slide back into the top here. Oh, damn it. There's a little gasket here that came off that I forgot to put back on first. This belongs way up in the crown. It doesn't even belong this far down the slide. Let's see if I can get it up there without ruining it. Yep, it made it. All the way up in the top. Okay. All right, pull out the paper that I put in here to plug this up so that way nuts and bolts and other fun stuff didn't find its way in there while I was in the garage this past year. There it is. The duck man likes to plug holes. <laughs> All right, looking like you should thread right on both sides here. These are your typical 10 millimeter nuts. Uh, the good thing about these nuts, or bad thing about these nuts, I should say, is you can't get a socket on them. You have to turn it with a wrench. There's just no other way. Get them finger tight. And we grab our 10 millimeter. All right, it's starting to bite. Do the same thing on the other side. Starting to bite. Give this just a little bit more. These you don't typically torque them very tight. All right, snuggy, snuggy. A little bit more. Here we go. And these things don't require much. Uh, they're probably like about five or six foot pounds only. So if you go and put one of these together, you don't want to over crank them. Okay, that's got that set. Let's throw the air filter back on there real quick too. I think that'll be a good idea so as not to allow more dirt in here. Look down inside of there and make sure it's still clean from a year ago. And it appears to be. I don't see anything obvious in there like nuts and bolts. Kind of stuff that you really don't want your engine to ingest. Now what I like to do is I like to make sure the hose clamp is accessible from this side of the bike because that's what's going to clamp that filter down. So that's good, but I'm not going to tighten that down yet. I think that's good because I'm probably going to find myself undoing it at some point because I've got to get this thing running properly before I can mess with it anymore. All right, where's my outlet on the fuel tank? All right, so we're going to have a little curly cue like that. I need to put a fuel switch in here too, as well as a filter. I put probably just a Volkswagen filter in there. Those are pretty easy to come by and they're not too expensive. All right, this tank. You remember we bolted or welded some nice bolts on the bottom here last year at three points, three mounting points around here, so that's good. And they dropped down into the top of the frame into three rubber mounts that I had made. You know, that worked out really nicely. But this tank does need to be sealed. This was made from, and I love saying this, this was made from Eleanor sheet metal. I don't remember what part of Eleanor that it came from, but uh, yeah, this is all metal from my 1956 Beetle. Welds on it are a little rough, but I'm gonna do some fill on it and some grinding yet anyway. But before we get into, uh, you know what, the grinding's done. I'm feeling it, there's, yeah, the grinding is all done. It still looks a little rough, but I mean, a little bit of fill will fix that. It doesn't need to be perfect, it's the doodle bastard. <laughs> but anyway, this part was a piece of Eleanor. Um, I don't remember what part of the car that I cut off to, uh, to make this part, but yeah, a piece, of, uh, a piece of Eleanor became the donor for this tank. And the gas cap, also came off the old tank that became part of the Eleanor donor uh, repair. So it's actually got a Volkswagen sized gas cap on it. I love that. <laughs> really love that. Okay, well, um, we're good here on the carburetor. Let's go ahead and take this tank outside, pour some sealer in there. Uh, just thinking about it, I probably should have done that first because it needs like a long time to dry. But uh, yeah, let's do that. We'll do the work over the trash can. And that way if we make a mess, it doesn't get everywhere. Well, I don't know how much of that video that we lost, but my camcorder just locked up for no particular reason. 
but I had finished masking up the holes on this thing and then I created a funnel out of newspaper and I don't use real funnels because this red coat does what the name implies. It coats the inside of um, anything you use. So if you use a real funnel, you're just gonna throw it away. So paper worked out just fine. And now we're ready to cap this sucker off. I wonder why the hell that camcorder locked up. The second time it's done that in a couple days. But I also haven't been very good to it. It uh, got dropped and it hit the ground a couple of times recently and uh, I'm not proud to say that, but it's not really been right since then. All right, I see the red coat's already leaking out the bottom. Looks like my little cap that I put on there didn't do the trick. <laughs> but that's all right, it's only gonna be on there for a second. Because this tank is so small, I mean, geez, it probably holds less than two liters. Which, by the way, we're gonna do a contest on that, yes! We're gonna give a free CIP1 hat and a Duckman Cycles NVW Garage t-shirt to the winner who most accurately guesses the capacity of this gas tank once we've got it all sealed up and we put some water in there. All right, now that red coat, you're supposed to just kind of let it ooze around the insides, but because this tank is uh, so small, I should have put gloves on. I didn't think it was gonna drip through so many places. Even Eleanor didn't do that. But because this tank is so small, I can actually very easily and very quickly pour it around the inside. So, geez, we'll be done in no time. In fact, I would even call it finished right now. <laughs> Look at all that bleeding through. All right, now this stuff is reusable. So take your cap back off. Looks like lipstick. <laughs> pour it right back into the tank, or can rather, that it came out of. Let as much of it run out as you can. This stuff has a uh, extremely solventy kind of smell to it. I mean, it's, it's volatile. If you're somebody that smokes when you do this kind of stuff, you're gonna blow yourself up. So don't. <laughs> Still running out of there. I might have to actually prop this up. There's a lot of it running. It's starting to look like boogers though. When it starts to look like boogers like that, it's, it's going to keep drying. So we're just going to lay that upside down, just like that, out of the way. We're going to put our cap back on the red coat because this can is still usable. Stuff's a little spendy. It's about 30 bucks for one of these cans, but uh, you could do a lot of tanks with it. Especially if you're doing little tanks like this, this stuff will last forever. All right. Put the little ring back on because I might just wind up using this at a much later date. And if it falls on the floor, the lid's not going to bust off of it too easily. For what it's worth, it might help to seal it a little bit too. All right, here we are. This thing, we're going to leave it to sit outside. I'm gonna let it continue to drip right out of the opening. And I'm just gonna prop it up here on the trash can so that way um, all the drippings find their ways into the can rather than uh, getting all over my lawn where the ducks might try to eat it. it. Just seems like a bad idea to let the ducks eat it. And minimal on my hands, just a couple drops. Not even a concern. That wipes right off rolls up like little boogers. You just kind of roll it up and flick them off like rubber cement. Okay, we'll come back to that in a little while. All right, the next of my concerns was this battery. Right now it's uh, still flashing red over there. And I'm getting, yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but 12.6 something volts, 12.6364, it's flickering. As I thought, it's just, it's not charging it. Just like indicated, flashing red light means not charging. So I don't think the fuse is bad. No, nope, fuse looks good. They do have that nice inline fuse here and yeah, that's, that's very obviously not bad. Well, I think I've covered everything that I can here. It's just, it's not charging for some reason. I don't even know why. It could be because the battery is just fully charged and it knows that. And that's why the charger just isn't giving it any more juice. 
Well, let's go ahead and put the battery into the bike and uh, we'll try to crank it over. And if it cranks quickly, I would say then it's just fine. And once it cranks quickly, then the charger may decide to uh, take over and start recharging again. So anyway, we're gonna play with that. Let's see what we got. All right, the negative battery wire on this bike is a bit long. Down the road, I will probably shorten this up. It just happened to be the only wire that I had at that time. That was the correct length. Seeing as how this bike was built mostly from junk, I don't even feel bad about it. Nope. Not even a little bit. Okay. Where's my screwdriver? Nowhere to be found. Of course it's not. Well, this should be a 10 millimeter bolt, so I got the 10 millimeter here. Oh, it's not even a 10 millimeter. Of course it's not. And there's my screwdriver, just turned up. All right, snug this up real quick. Put this under here. All right, we'll put the positive one on. You know what I should have done? And once again, foolishly did not. Should have connected the uh, wiring for the battery tender. Okay, gotta get the negative side. Are you positive? Nope, I'm negative. Well, yeah, the uh, positive terminal is touching my sweaty shirt. And when I touched the negative terminal with my slightly sweaty fingertips, it was a little bit of a tickle. It wasn't zapping me by any means, but it was like licking a battery. Just there was a little something. I could feel it. <laughs> Unless there's a broken... W oh, you know what? There it is. There's what's wrong. Something cut the damn battery tender wire. That, that could have been dangerous. Wow. Okay, well that's why it's not working. Um, the good news is, I just happen to know how to fix that. So we're gonna put a little spot of solder on there and put some uh, shrink wrap on it. I never even noticed that. I mean, hell, <laughs> that definitely would have been an issue. Okay, well, let's get that straight. First things first, we'll disconnect the battery tender entirely. And we'll be back after we grab some tools for soldering. All right, first thing we gotta do is strip back this wire a little bit. I had more than one sheath in there. That was interesting. And we gotta do the other end too. Probably should do this a little bit longer. It stretched as I stripped it. These are some uh, pretty heavy gauge wires considering the fact that um, They're only carrying low amperage. Okay, twisty, twisty. There we go. And I'm going, ooh, did I put the shrink tubing on? Yes, I did. I already slipped the shrink tubing on the wire. Big step not to ignore. I guess I did that before I hit the record button. <laughs> yeah, that could have uh, that could have been a problem. All right. Now, what I like to do in this case and you don't always have to do this, but sometimes with some of these bigger components, the thicker wires and things, I like to put a little bit of flux on there. Just it makes it a whole lot easier to get the wire tinned. Okay. Let me grab our soldering gun. And hopefully this thing works. I haven't used it in a long time. Yeah, it's working. Okay. Let it get hot. That tip really needs to be cleaned really needs to be cleaned. Yeah, it's not getting as hot as it's supposed to. All right, that's gonna <laughs> piss me off. All right, we'll be back in a second with my other soldering tools. All right, round two, here we go. Much better. Doesn't get nearly as hot as my gun should, but it's gonna get the job done. 
I don't know what's wrong with the gun, but it was a really, really cheap one. The only downside to using this iron is that it doesn't get as hot, so it takes a little longer to do something like this. you got to have a little more patience. If the gun was doing what it was supposed to be doing, I'd, I'd be finished by now. All right, here we go. Now, I'm going to let that cool down just a bit before I try to slide the uh, heat shrink over it, because if we slide it too soon, <laughs> the heat shrink will start shrinking over the uh, hot joint and get stuck before you've pulled it completely into its position. Now what I'm doing here with the pliers is I'm just flattening down any of the high pointy things that might stick into the shrink wrap. Yeah, it's not burning me now so it's not that hot. Shrink wrap it. Okay. This is the only reason I have a lighter. <laughs> Here we go. Problem solved. Now let's go ahead and hook the charger back up. And we'll see what happens here. There's the uh, charger. You see the flashing orange light. Solid orange. Charging! Okay, well we've just fixed that problem. I'm glad it was as simple as that. It's just kind of annoying that that new wire got cut. Well, while we were waiting for that tank to dry, I completely went through all of the wiring. I went ahead and shrink tubed all the little pieces here that go together the way they need to sorted everything out. I put a fuse in line with it since there's not much for electrics on this bike other than the, uh, the uh, I want to call it the ECU, but it's, uh, it's what, the CDI, the little electronic box for the ignition. I put a light here on the front so that way I, when I know that the thing is turned on, it'll light up. It's, it's only a red light and it's on the front, but you know what? It's not meant to be street legal, so F them. <laughs> I ran the wire through some uh, clear tubing too. I figured I'd make something that looks a little bit different. I'm sure it won't be heat resistant, but I don't care. Once again, this is the doodle bastard. And uh, well, it, it turned out pretty good. Uh, let me show you what the light looks like if you're curious here. Positive wire with the fuse. I got one wire connection that takes care of everything. There's our light. I thought that was kind of cool. It's actually a uh, Volkswagen aftermarket part. I think it was a bug pack or something. Anyway, it's one of those things I had around. I didn't have a match to it, so I figured this is as good a place as any to put it on. Could I have put it on the rear? Yeah, but I like it on the front. <laughs> so the only thing left to do in that wiring harness is right here I'm going to cut this and I'm going to put an inline switch. And I'm probably going to drill a little hole in this panel right here and put a little toggle that allows me to turn the bike on and off. I don't need a key switch or anything ridiculous. That should settle that. And of course, once this is on the power, I can hit the starter and it works. Of course, if I hit the starter without it connected, it doesn't start. So it does what it's supposed to do. This is working out real nicely. I guess I can unplug my soldering iron over here because I'm done soldering. Oh, the reason why my solder wasn't melting earlier, it turned out it was just some shitty solder. I used some old Radio Shack solder that I've had around for over 20 years. This stuff has just been around since forever. And as soon as I touch it to that iron, I mean, it melts immediately. So obviously the problem was in the uh, the solder that I had, and that's why I was having trouble tinning wires with it. That solder was uh, Harbor Freight solder, so are you at least a bit surprised? I'm not. Anyways, um, yeah, this is uh, looking pretty good here. That's our power wire. We fixed our battery today. There's really not a whole lot left to do on this bike. I think I need to um, sort out the rear brake because it doesn't have a front one. I need to get the brake working. There's a caliper on the back here but there's no um, there's no lever for it on now let me actually show you. There's no lever for it up here on the handlebars. There just isn't. It's just not there. So what I need to do is I need to um, put the rear brake probably over here on the throttle side because this side is going to be your clutch. So I still have to run the clutch cable out for that too. So I need a clutch cable from here. I have a whole closet full of extra motorcycle clutch cables and such. So I'll probably have something that should work out. 
Same with the, uh, the brake cable. In fact, I'm going to start digging around on my stuff today because I don't have a whole lot of time left. I was going to go work on the bus today. But I think, um, I think I might as well just stay on what I've got right here. And let me go ahead and dig out some cables and see if we can get this working the way I want it to be working. And maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll be able to um, get this thing almost to the point we can ride it. It's, it's actually almost there now. It doesn't need a whole lot more. Let me dig in those cables. All right, well, I went outside and fetched the gas tank and gave that a sniff. It still smells a little bit down inside of there, but it seems to be pretty nicely coated the whole way around. I'm going to let this continue drying before I even try to put fuel into it. These uh, little boogers that are around here are still kind of still kind of gooey. I'm trying to show you an example. But anyway, there was a lot of dingleberries hanging out of this while it was hanging upside down. I just peeled them off before I brought it inside. But it looks like it's a pretty promising setup here, and it looks like it's going to work just fine. Boom! So there's our gas tank. I'm going to leave the cap off of it, of course, because we want all the stinky stuff to continue drying up. Put the cap on, it won't continue to dry. All right, um, something else I noticed down here is that's the foot peg. This little sucker here, the spring on it was busted. And I don't know where I'm going to get a, a part for that. I thought I had a set of um, foot pegs for the CR500, the old ones that came off the frame. But I can't seem to find them. But if I had them, I would try to, to make them fit somehow. But what I do have is I have a set of foot pegs from, uh, I believe it's a Kawasaki. So I think I'm going to try to mount these on here. Because when I took some measurements here, the... Um, foot peg is about eight inches exactly and these are typically spaced about five and a half so for me to get five and a half the foot peg's got to be way up here somewhere so this thing I can easily build a little box around it and uh, weld it into place so it's right about here and that would solve that problem so I'm gonna build something around that it's not gonna be today it's gonna be one of the next videos but good news very very good news we now have a working clutch. That's right. The little handle on this thing is mighty short though, but it's a good thing I've got uh, <laughs> Duckman grip. It seems to be working just fine. So yeah, the clutch cable did turn out to be a little bit long, but I think I can just zip tie it right up to the handlebars like that, and that should make it nice and neat rather than sticking all out and all wobbly. Just put it into place. That should do the job. Boy, the neighbor's kids across the street won't stop screaming. Anyway, that's going to work out. I'm going to need some type of lever for this side to operate the uh, rear brake because there is only a rear brake. There's not a front brake. There's the caliper to it right there. It appears to have good pads in it and everything, and it's cable driven. So I should be able to hook a cable to that and make that work. Now, while I was digging through my junk, I managed to find a fuel switch. The fuel line is a little bit large for it, but I think if I heat it up, I can stretch it over that. So I'll need to uh, find a place to bolt it onto. Maybe I'll use a longer bolt here on the coil and mount it out like that. You know what? That's probably not a good idea. It sticks out past the frame. should probably be further in here somewhere. Anyway, I do have a fuel switch, and now I don't have to go pick one up. And if not, I think Lowe's has little things like this in their, their junk bin where the nuts and bolts are. If not, it might even be something in the plumbing area. So I'll look for that. But, yeah, kind of have an idea as to what I want to do. This looks like it's going to be okay. Threw the seat up there just for you to see. I still need to reupholster it, but I don't need to do that to ride it. So not much left to do. Really not much left. Uh, rear brake, rear brake, hook up the fuel line, wait for this to continue drying. I don't even have to paint it yet to get it in the show. I mean, it doesn't even look that bad because I'm not going to paint the whole bike until after that. I just don't have time for that. The idea is just to make it running, driving, so you guys can see it, so I can put it in the show, which really isn't going to be in the show, in the show proper, but it's going to be my pit bike for scooting around. And um, I think I've got something that looks pretty promising, and it's almost there. There's not a lot left. So as always, licky, likey, comment, subscribe, don't forget it. Plucked it. And my damn work phone won't stop going off. So don't forget to licky, likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, and uh, we'll see you next time.